Hello, I'm Olena Grinyuk, and we are recording our next episode of SME Banking Conversations in Frankfurt. Here, a year ago, I met Federico Avalan Porkmayer, Chief Partner Officer at EFCOM, a company that has been providing factoring software for 20 years. In a minute, I'm meeting Federico again to discuss what has changed during a year and what are the news and plans at EFCOM are. Hey. Federico, so nice to meet you. Good to this see you again. again. Uh, long yes. time. Yes. I mean, one year. <laughs> How have you been? Fine, fine. Okay. How have you been here? And, very good, and very good. Look at the weather. We're, we're lucky. I mean, it's a little bit windy today, but it's, it's great. So what do you think? Shall we go to the office? Yep. Yeah. Let's see. Federica, I'm very glad that we are that we meet this year uh, here in your office. So uh, a year passed since our last meeting. Mm -hmm. That's so, right. So yeah, how things have changed here in Germany and at Fcom? Wow, a lot of things have changed, uh, Olena. And yes, uh, mm -hmm. uh, we met last year. It was pretty much about the same yep. time, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, what has changed um, from, um, let's say from, let's start with Germany, uh, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, as you know, inflation rate has hiked up, but this is uh, uh, not a singular problem of Germany. The problem in Germany is that the inflation rate has remained uh, mm -hmm. high for a long time. In other European countries, it's gone down in the uh, we haven't been good in managing our inflation rate in going down as in other regions. Um, so, um, yeah, political term or in the sense of uh, uh, we have uh, parties that are not agreeing against each other. Um, this has put a lot of um, strain on the German businesses as well. Probably you have read out about um, Germany's economy weakening up. And, um, and businesses getting um, worried about um, the environment, the political, economical uh, agenda uh, affecting it. Mm -hmm. Energy prices uh, still being up and stuff. Uh, of course, this has an impact on, on, um, on the businesses, the economy, um, and therefore uh, also on our business. Um, however, as you know, uh, when there is crisis in our industry, in the residual finance industry, um, normally we're doing better than others. Um, so um, um, this from, from the macro terms in Germany and around. However, this is not only Germany because it's affecting everyone around. Hmm? Yesterday in the symposium I was uh, talking to Betul and, uh, and Betul was also uh, explaining that Turkey, for instance, um, mm -hmm. its uh, largest uh, exports, or Germany is the largest exporting um, country for Turkey, and mm -hmm. um, and that if uh, if the exports go down, obviously that has an impact in Turkey as well. Um, so, if uh, if the giant uh, is 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 weakening, then uh, the remaining actors, Eastern European countries. Uh, neighboring countries to, to Germany, France, ev everyone is also going to feel the impact. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, this from um, this from that side. However, um, from um, from our perspective, um, I last year was the best year for Fcom. Okay, wow, congratulations. Thank you. Um, <laughs> we we really had. The, we really had good numbers, um, large growth, and um, shareholders super happy. Um, we're, we're seeing this year, uh, let's say, a normalization. Um, so the high, high peaks that we had last year um, continued this year, but uh, we're seeing some sense of, of leveling. Um, this is not worrying at all because our pipeline is full, um, so we have enough to do until 2024. Um, but uh, nevertheless, uh, we look uh, not only what's immediately ahead of us, uh, but we look also, okay, 2024 is good, but uh, what is happening after? And uh, so um, that's why uh, we're, we're moving out 
uh, across the globe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, yes. You probably remember what I said about uh, FCOM going global, yes. and we really mean it. We now have um, presence in, in 20 cities on five continents mm -hmm. uh, that allow us to, allows us to access uh, the financial industry basically everywhere. Mm -hmm. And we really mean everywhere between Washington DC and Melbourne, Australia, mm -hmm. and um, down to Africa, Middle East, etc. Um, we have a presence in all those countries, in, uh, in India, which is a super exciting market. Um, so from that point of view is um, we are setting the scene for, for growth in areas uh, where uh, residuals finance has not been um, um, yet mm -hmm. a big topic, but where we are seeing it coming. Okay. And um, if we're seeing, let's say, a normalization of growth in, uh, in Europe, um, we're seeing fast growth in other regions. And that's why we're moving uh, forward in, in those regions mm -hmm. uh, with, um, uh, with partners, with people of, uh, from our own team, um, as you saw yesterday, and, um, and also with product. Um, just to mm -hmm. name you one, uh, apart from our EFX uh, scalable product, we, uh, we, we are um, also bringing on board um, uh, Islamic finance, mm -hmm. Islamic factoring in our case. And, uh, and that's why um, we think um, that we're getting very well prepared for, uh, for those markets that we're targeting um, in, 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 in those growth regions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, um, Pipeline is full also with events yep. through the end of the year mm -hmm. um, and um, especially in those growth areas. Mm -hmm. um, also Eastern Europe with, yes. <laughs> with uh, yes. Kr Krakow and um, we see Eastern Europe as a number one uh, region uh, and the uh, number two regions um, for us at least uh, in growth are uh, the Middle East and Africa. Mm -hmm. uh, and India. So um, okay. it sounds like a lot. It is a lot. It's a lot of work, uh, but we're seeing the results. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So uh, what has changed for us? Well, these are some tidbits uh, mm -hmm. of what has changed, as you okay. can see. Okay. Let's discuss more in detail of the results of the industry. Mm. So after the results for the last year, 2022 were published, we all have been discussing mm -hmm. this historical growth, I would mm -hmm. say, 18.3% mm -hmm. Amazing. globally. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. How do you evaluate these results? I, I mean, when I first saw the numbers, I was like, oh my God, 18.3% mm -hmm. uh, on a global scale. Um, Germany is close to, uh, Germany is 18%. Um, there are countries that have grown much more than that. Yep. Um, um, and, um, and yeah, the numbers are, Amazing, fantastic, but we also have to see that the, day, the year before was not so super amazing. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I think there is a lot of uh, catching up uh, in those numbers, um, like in most of, um, of those uh, downturns that see a very big hike in up mm -hmm. um, shortly after. Uh, we see those on the stock exchange um, very often. And mm -hmm. uh, I think this has some uh, something of that as well. On the other hand, um, uh, or adding on that is also um, we have inflation. So yep. inflation has gone up, right? And that means um, that uh, those numbers have also a lot of that portion. Mm -hmm. How much it is? Because it's uh, numbers from different regions. Yep. Um, again, I mean, Germany had an uh, uh, an inflation rate of 7.9% uh, mm -hmm. uh, or something like that uh, in total. Uh, some other countries higher, some lower. So um, if we take those 18 mm -hmm. and deduct uh, some of that, um, then we yep. see probably a clearer yeah, picture. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. if, you, if, we, if, we, if you look at the um, um, factoring companies per se, at least in our uh, client base, uh, we can say there are a few that have actually really grown business. I mean, okay. organic growth, mm -hmm. not just uh, inflation rate uh, mm -hmm. adjusted uh, 
non-adjusted growth, but uh, also real growth. Some of them are actually asking us or telling us, um, especially the prospects, um, if I look at them, mm -hmm. uh, that say, Federico, we, we're having the wrong system installed and uh, um, we're looking forward to finally implement uh, what we're doing mm -hmm. with you because uh, that will allow us to, to grow significantly because our systems currently are not allowing us to grow further because yeah. everything is either too manual or too cumbersome, too difficult and um, not flexible, etc., etc. So that is uh, preventing them from growing. Mm -hmm. So um, let's say in those numbers, the bad news is that um, they have not the inflation adjusted uh, rates included. Mm -hmm. Uh, but the good news is that we have customers that say, if we had better systems and we're doing that with you uh, in the implementation, uh, by the time we are ready to mm -hmm. go, then we feel super ready to grow our portfolio yep. significantly. So this yep. is the good news that I hear for the future. However, um, um, of course, some of the players out there are struggling because competition regulatory mm -hmm. is is hitting them and uh, and therefore if they're not um, set mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, properly then, then they will not make it yeah mm -hmm. let's talk about technology mm -hmm. you mentioned that it definitely has an impact it should have an impact to the growth of the mm -hmm. industry mm -hmm. how do you evaluate which impact it has right now and which Im impact it might have next years. Mm -hmm. um, I found it quite interesting yesterday uh, when um, Betul was showing a survey mm -hmm. that they did, that FCI yep. uh, did in um, amongst their members on a global basis. And, um, and she said, and she, as you remember, she showed us that um, the number one issue that most of the um, members had it was not having the right mm -hmm. technology on board. Um, so we were like, and remember also that she said, and I'm not saying this because uh, we're here in the yep. symposium of FCOM yep. to uh, make you happy, but uh, this is the result of the, in, um, the survey. Mm -hmm. And um, obviously this, this is good news for us. And at some point it's also good news for for the members, because um, if they're not using the right application, the right tools, um, uh, yeah. because they have legacy systems, because, 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 um, that means that there is a big potential in if they just did it. Yes. Um, if they just, you know, yep. um, started thinking in changing. Um, we're currently talking to, to a prospect uh, nearby um, that we have been talking for a couple of years, uh, they're super interested. And um, uh, they have a bunch of IT projects that have to finish before we're next. Uh, but he said, but you know what the biggest challenge is afterwards? Mm -hmm. Guess what? It's not uh, the typical implementation pro problems you have when you, um, when you bring in a new technology, but it's um, people. Mm -hmm. um, he said, Federico, we need to do change management. <laughs> he really so, said that. Uh, and technology. I was like, I was not surprised at all uh -huh. uh, because we preach that for years now. Um, but um, I found it interesting that the client itself said it, you know, this bluntly. Um, we have people that have been using the same systems for 35 years, 30 years, 25 mm -hmm. years, 15 years. And um, because they're stuck in, in how they do it, independently how painful it is, um, they don't want to change into something new, learning something new, um, getting on something new. Um, so change management becomes um, an, an important aspect mm -hmm. in, in, in bringing new technology on board. So the technology is available. Yep. Um, the technology can be put into implementation at many organizations out there. Uh, but um, making the change from what you do today to what you should be doing tomorrow uh, is, is preventing um, 
the diffusion of innovation, let's call it, in the mm -hmm. industry. So I guess um, what um, FCI, especially organizations like FCI and your organization uh, need to do is put that awareness um, into it. Because um, we as providers of technology, obviously we're selling it. So, hey, yeah, Federico, of course, you want to sell your thing and, um, and that's it. And that's why you're, you know, preaching it like uh, the best thing after sliced bread. But um, if someone else is saying it, if others are saying it, hey guys, do it. Otherwise, mm -hmm. hmm, you're going to you're going to lose uh, the momentum, yes. and uh, um, that would be much better if um, if other organizations and then of course a professional change management was put into place mm -hmm. uh, to actually do that. So this is uh, something I I really believe in it, and we're ha happy to uh, help um, because we uh, we know. Uh, where the pain points are in in changing mm -hmm. when it comes to um, identifying the pain points that people have today, yeah. relieving those pain points out of there. There's helping them to migrate from one to the other one, uh, transparency, mm -hmm. um, and also in, in educating and training. Uh, so I, I think those are all good elements, conversation, workshops to make people aware that there is a lot of benefits for them mm -hmm. um, if they did the change. Yeah, yeah, yeah. changes are difficult and from take an, time. Yeah, and from a technology point of view, of course, I mean, making systems easier, the industry is super complex. Um, mm -hmm. By the way, this is one of, uh, one of the challenges the industry is also facing, complexity, uh, yes. all those VUCAs, um, volatility, uncertainty, complexity. Uh, and. Uh, and nobody really wants to dig into the complexity of things. Mm -hmm. um, we discussed this before uh, we started this recording about uh, how, how, how it is today that complexity needs to be taken out, although the complexity is in the systems yeah. to handle it, but how to make it uh, uh, the look and feel that there is no complexity at all, yes. knowing that it is super complex. Yeah. So things should be simple. Making it simple for the user, for the user mm -hmm. uh, knowing though that there is uh, a lot of complexity behind. Yeah. Um, but the user himself, uh, perhaps not required to, un to, to feel and see the complexity behind. Mm -hmm. So, and this is a job um, that we're um, putting a lot of effort into mm -hmm. how to make complex things uh, look not complex yep, yep. and make it easy to handle. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And I like your motto that you have on your banners here everywhere that success, success is scalable. Right. And of course, this is about the technology, the technology brings the e scale, actually. Exactly. You will remember um, also from yesterday that um, or let's put it this way. Um, when, uh, when you talk to big accounts, obviously, um, uh, they have very clear understanding of what they ha want to have. Mm -hmm. We want it this way, this way, this way, this way. And then you start adapting, adapting, adapting. Mm -hmm. um, and this comes obviously to a cost um, and they're willing to pay for it. Uh, but they're already big. They have been in business for 20, 30, 40 years and they exactly know what they want. But then there is a vast majority, not minority, mm -hmm. vast majority out there um, that is uh, either in the starting phase or in a growth phase or in, um, in a, let's say, beginner's phase. And, um, um, and they are not asking you to have it this and this and this in this way. Um, and um, they want to try, they want, they're in markets that are not so large as ours. Um, so um, they haven't been in the industry for a long time. And um, obviously, if they want to have a system that is professional and you're not working with Excel yes. uh, or should not work with Excel yes. anymore, because you know that if, if your business is going to explode, then you have big risk, um, then you need to migrate to a system that is 
um, doing the job professionally mm -hmm. for your industry. Yep. And so what we're telling people is you don't have to be um, a tier one bank or financial institution. Uh, you can be tier X, not tier X, but tier X. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, and uh, a tier X means you are a starter and you want to grow in your region, in your industry. It can be a particular industry that's quite new to ta be tackled by um, residual finance, finance, but it can also be a particular region. Mm -hmm. uh, when moving into LATAM in, uh, in Africa, you find uh, regions that um, haven't done a lot of residuals finance yet, yep. uh, the Middle East also, and, um, and they want to start uh, working with this. So give um, the players in these markets uh, something that they can uh, start and scale up mm -hmm. according to their necessities. They don't know where the trip is going. Yep. Nobody knows. It's a, it's, 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 it's a green field. And mm -hmm. when it's a green field, um, you have to give green field uh, applications and tools. And this is uh, what, we, what we offer today. We offer scalable systems for someone that wants to start from zero, from one, mm -hmm. two, three, four, five, mm -hmm. um, and then move up the ladder and perhaps become and a tier scale. one yep. at some point in time, which mm -hmm we like to help uh, organizations to, of course, grow into. Mm -hmm. So we grow with our clients. So we give them the, uh, the tools to start small and move up to become whatever, yeah, in, mm -hmm. their, in their markets. Mm -hmm. So scalability is super important. Yep. Now, uh, this is not possible if you don't have the right technology. And, uh, uh, and we believe firmly in, um, in cloud computing uh, and, and SaaS solutions for, for that matter. Now, cloud computing is not something that FCOM invented, of course, and this is why it's super important to, uh, to move uh, on with the right partners. So we are moving in these with the right partners. Today, we can offer our solution by the click of a button to everyone around the globe within seconds. Mm -hmm. So if you came, um, I know where you live in, Poland, uh, if you came today and said, Federico, I want that to have installed in Poland, can you do that? I could tell you, uh, you want to start tomorrow? Because I could have the application ready for you tomorrow. Um, if someone came from, from Cape Town or from Buenos Aires or from Melbourne or wherever and said, asked the same question, I would give them the same answer. Uh, because with our partners, we have presence in those regions with data centers and everything. We just press a button, boom, off you go. Mm -hmm. All right. What are your predictions for this year? Where the markets will go and where the numbers mm -hmm. be the same? Or I think we'll see year. some. We will see some some flattening, as I, as I was mentioning before. I've been hearing from from different clients uh, how their business is evolving. That's. Um, uh, that they're not going to see the record growth from, from, from last year. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, we see many new entrants. Okay. New entrants, complete yeah. new entrants uh, that believe in, in, in serving the market in a different fashion, uh, especially in the SME section. Mm -hmm. or, um, and, and again, this is something that was not possible 10 years ago, but now with the technology available, it will. Mm -hmm. press the button thing. Mm -hmm. uh, so we see new entrants coming in, new models, platformification being a buzzword. Um, and uh, this, is, uh, this is going to change a little bit also um, the product offering in the industry. So many new players will come in that were not there. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, we will have um, some sort of competition in the existing, um, but also we will see uh, new models. Uh, coming coming on board and uh, and that will add um, to 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 the industry so I think uh, the traditional ones are flattening mm -hmm. but the new ones uh, that will enhance will will give some spice and, and growth as well so it we would see two different kind of growth in in, in within the portfolio of pro providers and the in the numbers um in in this and next year 
next years mm -hmm. actually yeah okay mm -hmm. so right. this is my my I, the numbers i don't know i don't know how much is that going to bring on business because taking inflation into account mm -hmm. um, we don't know what it will really be mm -hmm. but um, in any case plus plus mm -hmm. yeah okay have you noticed or whether the challenges have changed during the last year in the industry in not? the industry in our receivables finance mm -hmm. industry not in the yep. general yep, industry yep. apart from what we're seeing as uh, the big macro um, changes in our industry yes um, you know because every organization has its particular um, challenges uh, we made something <laughs> uh, maybe funny uh, or um, yeah perhaps uh, perhaps up to date, let's mm -hmm. call it. Uh, so we asked ChatGPT. <laughs> okay, of course. <laughs> we asked ChatGPT, uh, hey, ChatGPT, tell us what are <laughs> the, the, challenges. Uh, the challenges of the receivables finance mm -hmm. uh, industry. <laughs> what does it say? <laughs> I tell you, give me, give me a sec. <laughs> um, and I uh, have them here. Um, okay. Uh, what does it say? I just enumerate, okay? Yep. Uh, it says mm, technological disruption. All uh -huh. right, so we're in the middle of that. We talk about technology. Mm -hmm. um, we have, um, um, what else, what else, what else is here? Ah, look at that. Globalization, okay. Uh, business is expanding a across mm -hmm. the globe. And uh, so these are challenges. Actually, we have a few clients um, that... Um, that are doing that. So mm -hmm. um, we're not talking the big banks that have subsidiaries all over the planet, yeah. but uh, we're talking about uh, factoring organizations that were primarily focused on uh, doing business in their domestic market and what they're doing that now, putting satellites across uh, regions, mm -hmm. Europe, and even cross-border, wherever you know the clients could be. Mm -hmm. So globalization is, is something that we're seeing in here. What else does it say? Um, uh, we talked about the ESG um, issues. Yes, 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 yes. ESG. ESG. It's part of uh, yes. it's part of something that we're doing here as well. So ESG. Um, what else is here? Environmental, social, governance. Mm -hmm. Yes, diversification of services. So um, customers expect more from our customers. So if our customers are financial institutions. Uh, their customers are asking them to provide value-added ser services mm -hmm. on top of what they're, what they're doing today. Mm -hmm. And of course, that bounces on us. Like, hey, can you do this? Can you mm -hmm. do that? Can you do that? Or in, in, another, in other words, perhaps even uh, integrate with systems that do that. Hmm? One important one, credit risk management. So credit risk, mm -hmm. um, effect, uh, effectively assessing credit risk means a core challenge. Mm -hmm. So um, we hear that all the time. Yep. Mm -hmm. And um, then client relationships, how to do that, um, environmental changes. Well, we talked about them. Um, okay, so with the natural disasters and so forth. Cost, of course, is a thing. Um, how to manage cost, uh, the due diligence, uh, the loss of control. Uh, if we go, want to go a little bit deeper, recourse versus non-recourse. Mm -hmm. um, because if you don't know um, with whom you are doing business very well, can you trust that other yes. side? Uh, then you may enter uh, in, in risk uh, and defaults and whatsoever. And this is why um, this is also a topic. So we come to the risk topic again. Um, confidentiality, mm -hmm. complexity, limited funding, mm -hmm. uh, long-term cost, impact on financial statements, mm -hmm. and so on. So mm -hmm. a long list yes. uh, on, on that. And uh, if you remember yesterday, we made this little you know, yes. uh, ad hoc survey to all our present all clients in a mm -hmm. symposium. And, um, and the things that came up were pretty much the same. Um, and, um, and so we're happy to see that um, um, we were asking ChatGPT and it was reflected by the, um, the yes. survey. Yes. And so um, that, was, uh, that was quite interesting. What mm -hmm. would you do with this information? 
Well, what do we do with that information? Of course, we we wanted to know the information um, because uh, it would give us a hint on where we should focus our yeah. our future development. Um, and uh, this is one area where we have changed as a company, mm-hmm. as Fcom. Fcom in the past used to be a company um, that uh, let's call it um, uh, received a request from a client. Mm-hmm that said, can you do this? Can you do that? Can you do that? Can you do that? So we did this, this, and that. Mm -hmm. Uh, Most of the things we implemented and are part of our current application. Uh, We continue, of course, to listen to our clients that come to us and want something special, but sometimes these are individual requests and they may fit very well one Mm -hmm. or maybe very well fit another of our clients. Obviously, it's much better if we do something, invest into something, develop something that is good for not one or the other, but for all and many others. And uh, so instead of just listening in what everyone wants and implementing that, uh, we try to look at that, like asking ChatGPT, Mm -hmm. asking our clients what their major uh, issues are. And... um, and figured that perhaps what, uh, if they say today, you remember I said something about risk, risk, risk. Um, We said, okay, um, how can we mitigate the risk? And uh, yesterday in the symposium, remember I asked also a question, wouldn't it be nice if, and then someone raised hand, wouldn't it be nice if we could know what our customers uh, were getting into, driving into, if we could predict the future. Mm -hmm. Okay, Um, predicting the future probably has two sides. If you ask for yourself, do you want to know what is going to happen to you tomorrow? Maybe yes, maybe no. (laughs) (laughs) But if you are in the business context, um, wouldn't it be nice if you knew um, what um, your current portfolio uh, is developing to. And um, how do you do that? Um, So we gave it a thought and uh, two years ago, uh, I was thinking, hmm, wouldn't it be nice if if we knew um, the behavior of our clients um, and um, And so um, coming back to another mega trend, let's call it, in the industry, um, oil is, (laughs) no, data is the oil of the 21st Mm -hmm. century. And uh, I think that we're sitting, we, I mean, our customers are sitting on on a huge amount of data. And, uh, and then I thought, hmm, we are doing definitely, or no, put differently, um, uh, we're doing the job right. So this is, we're doing the job right, meaning that we have an application that's been there for 23 years and the customers are happy using it. So we're doing it right in a sense that we were asked to have an application, uh, an ERP system that manages your residuals finance business. Everything works smoothly and uh, and you can go to sleep and nothing dramatic will happen. Mm -hmm. You can handle hundreds of thousands of uh, transactions per day. Um, Our clients, by the way, do transact um, per year over 200 billion you're in transaction volume. Mm-hmm. That's a significant Church. number. Um, that's five percent of the of the total um, factoring volume uh, on a global scale, um, and over a hundred million U- uh, invoices. That is a mm-hmm. huge amount of data. So we're doing our job right in handling all that stuff. Obedient boys. But my question was to myself, 
not only are you doing the job right, but are we doing the right job? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You see the different mm -hmm. rephrasing, meaning, uh, aren't we aren't we missing something here? And um, in the development of the last um, 70, 80 years that artificial intelligence is out there, uh, what has increased dramatically is uh, the power of computing uh, from almost zero uh, megabits per second in transaction to up to 100 megabits per uh, transaction per second. Uh, so this is a this is a significant uh, growth, and it goes and it grows exponentially. And then uh, the amount of data available in the world uh, on digital uh, systems to mm -hmm. be to be um, able to be transacted or um, or worked on from almost zero to zettabytes, mm -hmm. and also increasing on yeah. on an astronomic and um, dramatic way. So every day we produce so much new new data, and uh, so data is the oil of the twenty first century. And um, so we thought a lot of the data that we have in our systems, our customers have in their systems, um, are resident there and we're not doing the right job. We're doing the job right, but not the right job. Mm -hmm. Meaning, can we use that data to perhaps predict um, the future? Mm -hmm. And um, can we have the glass bulb telling us mm -hmm. what's going to happen? And uh, we thought, let's try. Let's try and let's use um, technology for that. Let's use AI and ML, meaning machine learning. Uh, so we hired a team of um, data scientists and they are working on, uh, on, on a new product, open-ended. So um, mm -hmm. uh, we're making a, a major effort in here um, to give you um, a wizard to give our clients a, uh, a wizard that tells them, this is your ecosystem, and your ecosystem, meaning your clients, your debtors, uh, this is it, and this is behaving in this way. Not on a static, but on a dynamic way, meaning it changes every second. Mm -hmm. And the uh, same way as our body is changing from one second to the next, sometimes good, sometimes bad, uh, we also want to know what's happening in our ecosystem. And um, this ecosystem uh, is, is going to deliver to you valuable information with the help of our new application. Don't ask me the name of it. Okay. Uh, the baby uh, is, is not yet born. Uh, we're in, uh, in beta testing. Mm -hmm. uh, we have um, good customers that provided to us a bunch of um, historical data we can work with. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so we're right now discovering this new era um, and um, we're pretty sure that by the beginning of next year we'll be in a position to uh, to put some light into this ball this glass ball and um, and see what it is so again we're open open minded on what will be the uh, mm -hmm. the finals yeah. and uh, this is not going to be a final product that will stay there forever but um, evolving, of course, because uh, this opens a huge amount of opportunities, opportunities, mm -hmm. uh, in the sense of um, also driving new business, etc. Mm -hmm. uh, but preventing also to uh, keep doing business in something that may be the super risky thing, yeah. you, and uh, preventing that for for your mm -hmm. for your customer. So this is where we're heading to. Yeah, looking forward to it. This is great. Um, what would you name? The, as the main criteria for the factors when they choose factoring software partner? Okay, um, what we always hear is, um, is two things. Um, number one, obviously, can you solve their problem or mm -hmm. are, you, are you complying with what they require from you, functionally speaking? Mm -hmm. So they have their 
long list of things that you have yeah. to comply. You say yes, 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 yes. <laughs> All the list of yeses mm -hmm. <laughs> or no's. Um, the second one is shortly after, okay, how much? Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> What's the cost? So yes. uh, price or cost to functionalities ratio. So I think that is very obvious. Um, but then there is a third cri criteria. Mm -hmm. And uh, because what we sell is not a product that, you, um, that our clients buy every other day, yes. like going to buy bread or whatever, you yeah. may like to buy bread here to today, bread there tomorrow, uh, is um, how is after sales, how is service, how is trust. Mm -hmm. And um, trust is a super important thing um, because you're going to be, you know, managing a big portfolio. Um, I mentioned 200 billion yes. euro. Uh, our largest customer does 60 billion mm -hmm. euro in transaction volume mm -hmm. per year. So imagine they would not trust us. How would you, would you build it? How you build trust? Um, you build trust by um, by being there for your customer whenever he needs you, um, mm -hmm. he, she, um, and um, and not only being there but also solving a problem. So what you promise at the beginning is one yes. thing, um, and um, and they know that of course they know the vendor. The vendor comes to you and promises everything. Um, this is like in a marriage, right? <laughs> Uh, you promise a lot of things, and then um, do you deliver uh, what you promised, or do you not deliver? Um, and this kind of trust is something where you have to be ongoing there, 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 all the time. Um, and so when someone calls you up and tells you we have an issue or we want to do this or that, uh, can you do that if you keep saying no or keep saying nothing? Some, mm -hmm. some. Yeah. Some, 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 some organizations may not be, be available or reachable, uh, then uh, trust goes down and fear goes up and stuff. So be there and solve and, um, and be a partner, uh, mm -hmm. be a friend. Um, good word. Um, yesterday in the symposium, you may remember um, when we had the partners panel. Yes. On, on the screen, what was it, what, um, what they all said when it came to uh, what is um, one of the success factors of a good partnership? Yes. And, uh, and all of them said one word, friendship. Mm -hmm. um, with the, many of the customers, we become friends. Mm -hmm. And um, so um, friendship, uh, know each other, um, and the trust, I guess, are the, the third one. So price functionalities of course and um, in trust friendship yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. thank you very much federico for this conversation thank you elena for being here again thank you thank you thank, thank you, you.